Oh, oh, hello. Yeah. Hello, my name is David Mogler. And I'm Eric Scott. We are the Journal Fodder Junkies. <laughs> and we've been working in journals for about 15 or 16 years. We're also the co-authors of the best-selling books, Journal Junkies Workshop and Journal Fodder 365. And we're here to share with you in our video workshops, sponsored by Strathmore. So there you go. <laughs> this segment of our journaling videos deals with collage, image transfers, and creating transitional spaces in your visual journal. On the table you can see a variety of materials that we're going to be working with with these processes. So we have a lot of fodder here and we are the journal fodder junkies so the fodder is the food for your journals so there's a lot of materials that we can use in a lot of different ways we've got a couple um, photocopies we've got a drawing on tracing paper we have postcards and maps and magazine images uh, we're also going to uh, use some images out of the small sketchbook and I mentioned the tracing so the, the tracing paper is handy to have we also uh, we're going to use the scissors to cut this is a chart pack blender pen and it has to be the brand chart pack because others don't work. Uh, we've got some clear packing tape and a uh, Uhu glue stick. Any glue stick will work, we like Uhu. Oh, and we also have some uh, scrap paper that we're going to use to keep our work surface clean. For this segment, I'm going to be working in the Strathmore Mixed Media Hardbound Art Journal. And I already have a page prepared and I'm going to start off with doing some collage. So I've got my scissors and I've got my glue stick and I'm going to use this mat. Okay, so Eric's going to begin by he's already se by selecting that map. That's the image that he wants to work with. So he's going to cut it out to the specifications that he'd like to work with. So just using a basic pair of scissors, just cutting around the edges, get that image out. Any image could work for this demonstration. We're just purposely selecting this map to, to give you some variety. Then he's going to get his glue papers. And introduced earlier, it's just a way to have a surface that you can easily glue images with and it keeps it the glue from getting on other things that you have around you, getting on the table or getting inside of your book where you don't want the glue. And as Eric's using the Yoohoo glue stick, just notice how that he's effectively covering the back of the material that he wants to glue into the book. He's making sure it goes all the way around the edges. It goes all the way off of the edges, a full coating of glue. And since he has that glue paper there, it doesn't really matter about the excess that might be going off onto the sides. He's also using uh, the Yuhu glue stick that's a colored glue stick, so it's, it makes it a little bit easier to see where, where the glue is going as you're applying it to the back of the image, and that purple eventually will dry clear. And he's selected a spot, he's gluing it down and making sure he really smooths it out well so that there's no seams and no buckling. And another thing that you could think about doing, not just gluing the image in all by itself, but maybe continuing to think about the layering process. One way that you can do that is possibly by utilizing tracing paper. So Eric is gluing the back of a drawing that was already done on a piece of tracing paper. And then he's going to glue that on top of that map image and then in the places where the, mag the image drawn on the tracing paper overlaps, he's going to get some see-through from the map, creating some more interesting layers and spaces to work. Another effective technique for including images is image transfer. We're actually going to do a solvent-based image transfer using a photocopy because of the toner-based image. Sarek has pre-selected a photocopied image. As he stated, it needs to be a toner-based image. So it needs to come from a photocopy machine or a laser printer. Your regular bubble jet, inkjet printer that you might have at home is not going to work for this process because it actually works with water-based inks. This needs to be that toner-based 
image. So this technique works best with fresh photocopies and you can select images that you have drawn and photocopied or, Im or images from books or magazines that you can photocopy. Begin by placing the image you want face down into the area of your journal where you want it. And as you can see, as Eric's demonstrating, just use your chart pack blender pen to color over the back of the image. It'll, it will soak through the paper and you'll actually be able to see the image emerge because of the material being applied to the back of that paper. And then after you have started to do some of the marker on the back, you want to hold the image and you can check for the registration. You can check and see, is it printing the way you want it? And if you feel satisfied with the results, you can take the paper away and you have your image transfer completed. If the image doesn't turn out as well as you expected, you can use a bone folder or a wooden spoon to kind of burnish it and really encourage, encourage that toner to transfer. Another image transfer that's pretty easy to do is a packing tape transfer. So all I'm going to need for this is a toner-based image, um, photocopy or a laser print, a um, roll of clear packing tape, some scissors, and some water. Sarek has begun by selecting the image that he wants to work with, a photocopy. Just remember it needs to be a toner-based image. Could be from a photocopier, could be from a laser printer, and lots of magazine images can also work for this process. Like any image transfer process, Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't work as well, and you just need to sort of give yourself over to the process and allow yourself to accept the results and experiment. So Eric has begun by putting the tape, pulling it out so that the sticky side is facing up. He's utilizing the static cling that takes place by allowing the tape to sort of static cling itself to the surface of the table and then he can carefully place the image face down into the sticky part of the tape. You do not need to worry about lining up seams, the tape can overlap, but you do want to be sure that you cover the entire image with the packaging tape. So you have to successively pull out more tape to get it fully taped together. So this process can be fairly labor intensive, so usually we recommend not picking an image that's much larger than your hand or you're going to be there for quite a while pulling out tape and sticking it to the paper. Once the tape has been applied, Eric can carefully cut out around the image, taking away any excess tape and paper that he does not want to use for this image transfer. It is much, much, much easier to work this technique in the way that Eric is doing it now. I would not recommend cutting out the image first around the edges and then trying to tape it. It's just much easier to start with a square or a rectangular piece of paper when you are doing the transfer. Eric's going to use the handle of his plastic scissors to burnish the back of the image. You can use a bone folder, a wooden spoon, just something that's going to encourage that toner that is creating that image to stick to the tape so that when he goes to the next step of this process it will release a little bit easier. Also, if any air bubbles occurred in the taping process, those can get sort of popped out when you do the burnishing. Then the final step is put it in the water, let it soak, and lots of times when we're working in workshops people ask us how long does it need to soak? I mean the basic answer is as long as it needs to. So we'll soak it for a few seconds, pull it out, and just using his fingers he's going to rub on the back and the paper should start to kind of roll off the back, it comes off in these little ribbons, and if it feels like it's not coming off really well, you can add a little bit more water and continue to rub with your finger to remove the paper. And the image that was on the paper, the toner, 
will stick to the tape and you can take all of the paper away. When working with photocopies, it's a fairly easy process. You usually get a really clear image from a tape transfer. However, when working with magazine images, sometimes this process, the color that's in the magazine, can sort of get scratched. So, like I said earlier, you just need to experiment, try different materials to get successful tape transfers. So all the paper has been removed and the image is revealed and it's ready to be applied into the journal. Eric has carefully dried off the tape image and now he's looking for an area in his book where he feels that it would create an interesting layer in his journal. Even though the packaging tape does have a little bit of stickiness on the back, we still highly recommend you put some glue using your glue stick and your collage gluing technique, your gluing paper. Get some glue on the back of that tape transfer and then position it in your journal where you'd like it to go. And once again, smoothing it down so that you have good contact with the paper. And once again, Another way to create an interesting layer in your journal utilizing the tape as a transfer technique. All right, now we're going to show you some page manipulation uh, techniques uh, that will create some transitional spaces in between pages. So the first one I'm going to do is just a basic window cutting through. Sirk has selected a place in his journal where he wants to do a cutout to create this window using his hobby knife and placing the cutting mat underneath of the page that he wants to make this cut. Just carefully cuts around that circle shape. And then can pop that circle out and then he's able to reveal the page underneath as a possible space to leave open or what he could choose to do is to take the piece that's been cut out and put it back in its place. So literally gluing it to the page underneath but visually when he's finished it'll look as if the circle is still existing on the page that it's been cut out of but then there'll be a little surprise for the viewer when they look through his book that when they turn that page it is actually a hole and they are able to see through to the other space. Another variation of doing the window cutout is to think about creating a tunnel through the book. So Eric has already cut out that rectangular shape but what he's going to do is slide the cutting mat under the next page and then cut out another rectangle and then he'll remove that piece of paper and now the tunnel has gone through two pages. He's going to slide the cutting mat down again and cut out another rectangle. Being careful to make sure that the next rectangle is inside of the previous one and he could continue to do this process and get many layers through the pages. The interesting part of this technique is that once again page transitions. The pages start to connect together even if the information that you've drawn or collaged or painted on the page doesn't have a direct connection. They're connected visually through the cutout and through this tunneling that you can create with successive cutouts of the same shape as it gets smaller. So another technique that you can experiment with in your visual journal with page manipulations, uh, instead of utilizing scissors or utilizing your hobby knife, you could just tear the pages to create different variations. Sarek's tearing out a page about three quarters of the way across and then he's going to go to the next page and tear this one out about halfway across the page to start creating this idea that the pages are layered up or a portion of them is being taken away. 
It does create ver a variety of pieces of scrap paper. That scrap paper could be then glued back into the journal. You could create tabs on those pieces as we've demonstrated before to put them back in the book. But now you have a series of pages that will all sort of overlap, yet underneath each one of those flaps you'll be able to reveal different information. So, thank you very much and uh, join us on the web and uh, check out our, our two books. Thank you.